My name is Chris, and today we're going to talk about which came first. But before we get started, you're going to want to stick around until the end of the video because today we picked the winner of the Uberlite Flex 4100. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. A very popular question that has been asked over the years when it comes to creating a new two-channel system is, what should I buy first, speakers or an amp? In our quest for equipment to help us experience excellent sound, we often find ourselves looking for shortcuts. I myself have considered this on several occasions, hoping that one magical component would stand out over the others, enabling me to make a purchase without reservation that I knew would be the best thing on the market to help my stereo grow. Unfortunately, as we all come to find out in our musical journey, it's just not as simple as that. As much as we'd like to find that one thing that would turn the tide and wow our friends and family, we ultimately realize it's going to take a bit of work to find what we're looking for. So then, why do we continually ask this question? Well, for one thing, newer people in the hobby have often yet to learn that the journey is as much fun as the destination for almost all of us. They'd like to get that one piece of gear that would set their stereos apart from the neighbors or friends and understandably so. Also, in an age of instant gratification, I think it can be difficult for newer music lovers to learn the patience of trying out different components over the course of time to see what sounds best to them. For many, I'd imagine finding the information online and simply placing an order on their favorite web source for audio components to be much easier. And if we're being honest with ourselves, tends to be a growing trend. Another demographic of people who might ask which to buy first are those not realizing what they're really asking is, what should I upgrade first? Maybe they have an old stereo receiver that was handed down and a pair of speakers that they can't remember buying sitting in a spare room or in their basement. I don't have quite as many spare parts lying around as I used to since I've tried to declutter my life some, but over the years I've had indeed many different components and I'd be completely unable to tell you where even half of them have come from. Sometimes the question isn't even asked at all. Instead, a reviewer online, a YouTube host, a friend, or even your local hi-fi salesman will simply offer their opinion on what you should buy first. Now, this isn't inherently bad, mind you, but for those of you who are newer in the hobby and perhaps quite impressionable, it can certainly give the feeling that if you don't follow this unsolicited advice, that perhaps you're doing something wrong. I myself find that I tend to go against the grain on this particular topic. For many years, I've heard the vast majority of people always say that you should not only buy speakers first, but that you should spend about half of your available stereo budget on them as they make the most impact. But is that really true? Coming from a musician background, I can say with certainty that the amps we played during my active years were absolutely more impactful than the speaker cabinets to which they were playing through. During a typical recording session, we would try as many different amps, speakers, and cables to see what combination sounded best to us, but we learned early on that the amp we chose always had the greatest impact on the sound that we heard. Marshall, Orange, Vox, Fender, Mesa Boogie all had very different tone, and that's what made them so coveted. No one wanted to go out and buy a solid state Marshall because we all knew that the JCM 800 and the other two models just sounded better. Yes, of course, that's an opinion, and you should do and buy what you like. But when it came to guitar amps around the Detroit music scene, that was what people liked. Granted, the bands I played in and with around that time tended to lean toward the rock and metal side of the spectrum, so that indeed could be a very big factor here. But as a guitar player, when asked at a local show or just having a beer with other musicians, we generally always talked about our next amp purchase and not so much about the speaker cab we wanted next. So what would make a hi-fi world such a completely opposite space? Why would we be so adamant here that you should buy speakers, the best speakers you can afford, before you worry about getting a good amp? A large part of it is that guitar amps are made to have unique tone, while hi-fi amps are made to reproduce tone, even if there is a certain color or house sound to each manufacturer. But still, does that mean that you shouldn't run out and buy speakers first? There must be something more to this common recommendation. Some of the reasoning I've heard is that speakers will change the sound more drastically than an amp will. I've always found this to be a bit debatable because of my musician days, but I can see the point trying to be made. Hi-fi speakers, which are made to reproduce music and not create it, are built to a different standard than a guitar amp. They're more refined. They have much more research and development being done. They're specifically designed to be used in pairs to create a sound stage, so considering that, I can see why speakers do make a big difference. But that's not the end of the discussion. I also hear in the very same breath that amps don't make as much of a difference. I'm told regularly 
if reading discussions online in magazines and YouTube reviews are being considered told, that if you have an average amp and excellent speakers, you'll be better off because amps all tend to sound the same. That phrase bothers me. I would say to anyone truly listening to the sound and not just riding the internet popular comment wave that amps don't sound the same at all. The makeup of each amp is quite different from one to the next, even if the basis of the technology is much the same. Is it a class A or AB? Maybe it's a class D. How about the capacitors, resistors, or the circuit board? Is it point-to-point -point hand wired and soldered? Is it a tube amp? Is it a solid state or perhaps a hybrid of the two? Certainly, all of these factors will have a great impact on the sound, right? Well, yes. Otherwise, amps would all sound the same, and I think it's pretty clear that they don't. So why then do people so consistently say that you should get speakers and not an amp first? I think it has a lot to do with pack mentality. We've simply heard this repeated to us so often that we should get speakers first that we just take it as a state of fact now. We no longer question if this is valid, and I think it's a shame. The hi-fi world has come so far from what it was just even 10 years ago that from time to time it's good to question things to see if the original ideas still stand true. So am I saying that this age-old adage is wrong? Not exactly. However, I personally think it's a better idea to buy a good amp first and look at getting better speakers second. And here's why. Let's say you have a below average sounding amp. And if you're just starting out or you're on a budget, that is very often the case. Now, you would attach some really nice sounding speakers to that amp. What do you hear next? Well, the speakers, sure. But also, you hear with much greater clarity the limitations of your amplifier. If it's a poor sounding amp, this will be much more evident and you may even start to think that it's the speakers that are causing the problem and not the amp. If it's harsh, that's going to come shining through. If it has a small sound stage or low dynamic expression, you'll hear those limitations and perhaps get frustrated. You'll start to question the speakers and wonder if you've made the right choice. Another idea is that reviewing and auditioning amps is more time consuming and simply more work. Plugging in a couple of speakers is very easy to do, and it's no trouble to move them about the room to see what you think about the sound. If you find an amp that you like, that's your main source for sound, I think you'll find that auditioning speakers is much more fun, and you're less likely to get burned out on the whole process. So, is getting speakers first wrong then? No, it's not. As with everything in the hi-fi hobby, you should do what you feel is best because it's your stereo. But, I would suggest to you, try looking at it from another point of view. Try out amps with the speakers you have and see what you get. Look at the features on an amp and see if it has something that looks good and is a good fit for you. If you have the option, and most do considering so many online retailers give you 30 or even 60 days to try a product at home, audition some integrateds and see what you think. You may find that getting an amp first is the better choice. Now let's get to this raffle. I have all of the info plugged in here, so let's start the random name generator and hit start. Reed Smith, congratulations. You have won the very first raffle on the show. Send me an email and we'll sort the shipping details. If I don't hear from you in a week, however, I'll have to pick another winner, so please get back to me as soon as you're able. Thanks to all of you who entered, liked, and subscribed and helped this channel grow so quickly. I truly appreciate you and you make this hobby so much fun. If you're in a position to support the Vinyl Attack, we do have a Patreon and you can join the kind folks who've already made pledges. If Patreon isn't your thing, you can also buy stickers from the website as well. Again, I truly appreciate all of your support. Thanks for dropping by, and I look forward to next time.